And we are back. And so clearly we're working with another uh, chi-square problem, but this time we're gonna have to combine it essentially with our z function to figure out our observed value. So let's go ahead and let's kind of put this on a side screen here. Let's zoom out just a hair. Um, and let's go ahead and start to solve the problem. So I wanna make sure I clear my entire notebook. So I know I'm gonna have to use this equation here. And I'm gonna have to use my, I'm gonna actually evaluate it here, PDF, and I'm gonna use my Z function, and then that's gonna be pretty much it. So I'm gonna paste it in here and look at that. So for my observed values, I see, and actually, before we even get to that, I'm just shift in here. So I have my number of samples is equal to 5,678. Uh, so I can put that. And I find and I observe multiple values here. So 5,500 samples. And actually my, Z, my mu is gonna be 45 nanometers, standard deviation one. But I find 5,500. I find 3,900 here. I find 10 samples less than that, 1,800, and then 3,600. Those are my observed values. I need to figure out my expected values. And to do that, I'm gonna to have to figure out Again, based on the sample should come from a normally distributed population with a mean of 45 and a standard deviation of one, I now need to kind of calculate those. So let's go ahead and take the first one. So I found 5,500 samples grain size greater than 43 nanometers. So what I have to do is I have to take the Z function and, and integrate my Z function, which is my PDF, from bounds of Z goes from Basically, I want to have it greater than 43. Oops, let me do this. So ZF. So my X is going to be 43. My mu is 45. And my sigma is 1. So I want to integrate that from there to infinity. Infinity. And then I want to take that and multiply this value by N. So if I look at that ex uh, expected, I can see those values. So I can copy that four or five more times. One, two, three. Five. And now let's go to the next one. Uh, less than 45.5 nanometers. So now I need to kind of switch my limits of integration. Same function. So now 45 point, uh, basically 45.5. And I'm going to go from less than that. So I'm going to go from to minus infinity. So minus infinity to 45.5. 10 samples less than 42. So I'm going to copy these limits. I'll put it in. Same thing here but the only switch is gonna be less than 42. Uh, I can now do between 45.5 and 50. So I can go ahead and do, I'm gonna do here my Z of 45.5 and 50. And then finally between uh, 44.2 and 46. So again, I could copy these. Let's copy that here. Let's get this in. So we're going to do 44.2. Oops. 44.2. And we're going to go to 46. So those are my expected values. And this would be my chi square. So now the question is I need my chi. My alpha is 10%, so 0 0.1. So 0, 1. And then my new is going to be equal to my new value is going to be, again, how many outcomes do I have? One, two, three, four, five. So my new is gonna be equal to one, or actually five, minus one, minus r, where r here, normally distributed, I have two fitting parameters which correlate to my mean and my standard deviation. So that's gonna be a new of two. And then I can go ahead, I'm gonna look up on my little table here. So, oops, a new of one, two, so my value is 4.605. So 4.605, 4.605. And then I could go ahead and use that same value. So right tail test. So I am again in the do not reject. Excellent. And that's it. So let's close this up and let's move on to the next value or the next problem. And actually I'm gonna quit my kernel right now. Make sure I don't have any of those things. I'm gonna save my notebook too. See you in the next video for problem three. Bye.